uh, Daniel has the world record here on uh, Mute City 2. He has, I th believe, 55, but that is converted from the PAL version of the game. My, my 56 is on NTSC. Uh, maybe he has 55 on NTSC as well. I don't know the top of my head right now if that's the case. But I know that his PAL record is really good. So quite a bit away from my best poll record my best poll record converted to ntsc is also 56. actually i beat my poll record on ntsc so that goes to show that because polls should be easier as you say uh, i can probably get 55 if i play poll converted all right let's go big blue two So this is a track that is really compact, there's a lot of corners, a lot of hairpins, a lot of stuff going on and it's um, really uh, a lot of technique is going on in this track. That's why I'm rating even the easy strategy uh, with, a, with a jumper or a grip driving style as uh, one of the hardest tracks I would say to optimize using grip style driving. The decimal seconds I think I have 56.5 or 6 and the world record is 55 I believe very low like 55.1 or something. So that's what you should be thinking about. So big blue 2 here we go. Steph goes 57 You can see, well, let's just watch it. Alright, strategy one on Big Blue 2. As you can see I rated 2.5 out of 10, which I think is the hardest grip driving style uh, strategy in the game. Uh, maybe not this track, but it's you know it's not easy. You have to really know how to side attack around corners efficiently to keep your speed. Uh, most of the trick is no when to boost where to drive etc so let's go over it if there's any specific questions feel free to ask and i'll be happy to answer you 55 seconds is the goal which i think is fair so for this corner again side attack first and then steer into it so immediately pick your line a little bit to the left side attack left and steer around the apex. For this part, the efficient driving um, principle of driving in straight lines and steer as little as possible, that really applies here as well. That's really where, uh, what you can see on jumper or grip style uh, strategies that when you try to optimize them, you have to keep straight lines. 
get the dash plates in the corkscrew, se this corkscrew section into the tunnel, just drive a straight line, gradually steer around this corner. Now this hairpin coming up, that is a really tricky one. On the first lap you're not going that fast. So mash the side attack button and go along the apex. That's all timing. The faster you mash, up to 30 frames per second, uh, alternating every frame, uh, the sharper you go around the corner. So the faster you mash that button, the sharper you can go. So you can mash faster than side attacks up here. Start of lap 2, I side attack around this corner first, then boost. Side attack here. Do not go out too wide, and I just keep on boosting all the way until the end of the tunnel. Keep a straight line. The dash plate on the right side here. Get that one. So generally, I, I think for very beginner players, this section is tricky because there's no balls and it's also upside down. So if you leave the track, it's game over. <laughs> but we can actually use that for later strategies to uh, have some good fun with. So as you can see, all the way from after the first corner, almost up to this point, I keep on boosting. Now this corner, what I do, I steer into it to the left just a little bit and then start meshing the T-button really fast. The more you steer into it, the sharper you can go around the corner. We will need to do that even more in the next few strategies because we're going faster. So, you know, for these kind of points, don't boost before it because you waste away your boost because you lose speed anyway. Side attack here and just keep on boosting all the way, blow away pretty much all your energy until you get to the refill point after the turn. So, this section is actually the easiest probably because there's just keep a straight line. Don't oversteer, don't try to do anything funny. Because we uh, we have grip style settings. Also, because there's so much cornering going on, you cannot you cannot build a very high top speed. So the settings are about three plus three from the middle, three stripes to the right. So that is relatively high acceleration for grip driving. Because you know we need it. We need to accelerate away from corners often, and we cannot build up high top speeds. So in the end of lap 3, just blow away your energy, and finish the race. So you say your best pile time is 103. So off the top of my head, I think that is uh, 54 or 55 on NTSC. So that's good, that's good. I get 53 here. It's more than enough for the, for the Staff Ghost. So I think... Want me to calculate it? <laughs> um, so what what is 103 PAL in NTSC world? What I do is I divide it in seconds, so that's 633.34 seconds, divided by six, multiplied by five, equals 52.78. So yeah, you did an excellent job there. So is that, so obviously you're already doing more tricks than what I just showed because I got a 53. Um, so yeah, so I think that's this first strategy is clear. It's not that hard. Uh, if you're a very beginner player, definitely use it to beat the staff ghost. Should you have quite a bit of time to spare? Um, uh, let's move on to strategy two, and this is where things will take a step up in difficulty because for now we're switching to drifting mode we're not doing anything too crazy yet with jumping we're not using air maneuvers just yet but we are using you know pretty difficult drifting moves so let's go
So there you go, strategy two. Pretty much what you explain. Just drifting and no air maneuvers. And I get all the way up to 48 seconds. Consider this, the world record is 47.8. So this is about a second from the world record already. They were not doing anything too crazy yet. Now drifting this optimally is not realistic, but you can get close to it. You can totally get close to it. So what's going on? Some pretty difficult drifting moves uh, and some subtle things. So I'll try to uh, explain it. Again, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to answer you. You start out immediately with a switch drift. How do you do a switch drift? You hold down the R and the Z button at the same time. And then just let go of the R button when you're about to drift to the right. Keep holding that C button and you do a switch drift. Drift into a rail here, keep bouncing back and forth and then at the absolute last moment, because it's TAS, uh, I counter steer to regain your grip, but really just regain your grip before the dash play. For this section, keep a straight line into the tunnel. And now I'm starting a drift into the reel, just bounce a few times into the right propeller to refill stuff. Now this corner is too sharp to really get any benefit from drifting it. So I side attack it instead, then use this dash plate for a boost drift on the right rail. You can actually uh, gain extra time if you uh, get airborne there just a little bit, just a little bit. So you can also just hold down on the control stick a little bit when you drift into the rail. It's tricky so don't worry too much about it. I'll show it in a later strategy. So for side lap 2, drift around the first corner and then keep your grip around the second one. Keep boosting along this middle section. A trick I do for many corners is I side attack into a drift. This is called an angle drift for those who have watched my uh, move tutorial. And it allows you to control a little bit better how sharp you're drifting curve is going to be. So for this one as well, I right side attack first, drift into it, and the timing of your boost is crucial here. If you boost too soon, you can never make it. If you boost too late, you're wasting time. So you have to find the right timing there to go along the apex of the corner and at the same time try to take advantage of the full width of the road to gain the maximum amount of speed. Same with this one. Boost and drift along the apex. So this is what it optimally would look like. So there's, there's a lot of subtle things going on. Hence why nobody got 48 with this strategy uh, as a human player. But 49, I think I can do 49. So just waste away, blow away all your energy here. Because there's two small fillers at the end of the track. So again, right side attack into the corner. Time your boost well to go along the apex. Try to go wide. And because it's the last lap, and the Bloodhawk or Hellhawk has an A class boost, and Dash Blades have a C class boost, and you have enough energy to manually boost anyway, that A class boost will win you a little bit of time. That's why I skipped the last Dash Blade on purpose. Alright, so there's a lot of switch drifting going on, a lot of real drifting going on, and boost management. You have to practice it, and if you do it well, you can get around you know, maybe 50 seconds or so, which is starting to get really good, considering the world record is only 47.8. Right then. So, ready for strategy three. <laughs> strategy three is a strategy that I usually use myself when I play this track. Uh, it doesn't use 
the most crazy air moves, but it uses most of them. Almost all of them, actually. There's just two of them that are really hard. That are reserved for strategy four. Or three of them, I should say three of them. Uh, seven out of ten. That means it's hard. That means it's really hard. Because there's not many strate uh, strategies that are explaining that rate up to seven and higher. Though this is so... Because one you can do pretty much for... At, you have to be experienced. You have to know how to double tap dive well. You have to know uh, how to do a diagonal dive. Because this is a track where we're going to see diagonal dives. They're fun, they're not that hard, but they don't leave a lot of room for error, so it can be tough at first. Yeah, so side attacking into drifts is faster, more optimal than uh, wobbling the control stick back and forth. In any case, don't, don't do that. You can also just hold the drift button like the R button and steer left and you will automatically start to drift. Um, you can play a little bit with the timing of your drift and your drifting curvature if you side attack first. Uh, so I like to do that often myself. Uh, it's become a sort of a habit and it's also paying off. You don't have to, but don't wobble the control stick <laughs> to start a drift. Or yeah, if you just steer left and hold R, that's, that's fine. That's, I do that myself a lot too. So let's go for strategy three. Double tap dives and diagonal dives all in one strat. Let's go. So it's madness. It's madness. <laughs> yeah, this is where this is where this track to me really starts to be fun. It's just a it's a fun track. It's it feels cramped. It's small, there's a lot of tight corners, but still you can have a lot of fun. You can actually do two dives per lap, technically. I do one dive per lap on this strategy. So on the first on the first lap there's a big double tap dive into the tunnel really tricky one really tricky one you just have to practice it a lot and know what to what you should be pushing or sh should be holding the diagonal dives i don't think are uh, so hard but they are really timing dependent so i'll try to go over it and explain if anyone again any questions Every question is very welcome. That's why I'm doing this as a live session this time to uh, have a back and forth to make it more interactive and more hopefully insightful for everyone and more fun. So it starts out the same as the last one. Switch rift, hold the R and Z button. At this point, I let go of R. Hold C button into a real drift on the right start bouncing a little bit here that's okay as long as your drifting angle is uh, good no matter so up to here it's exactly the same as the last one 
now I have to prepare well for this very tricky delta dive into the tunnel. So I go to the middle of the road on purpose. At this point, I left side attack and mesh the zero and I steer very hard left. And at this point, I'm holding the control stick down left a little bit and moving it to the upright position, so half a circle. And now the ship starts flipping over and I start meshing the Z button and hold up or um, yeah, mostly up on the control stick. And so how do you land this? It's all about the flipping over part. It has to be just right, your angle has to be just right to land back in the track. And because you um, get airtime, so I'll pause for a little bit. You get airtime from a section of track that is banking. It is corkscrew, it's turning around. If you do it too early, that banking will throw you off completely. Because how much should you flip the ship around? And that's very hard. So I do this at the very end of the corkscrew, right before the tunnel. You can just get a tiny bit of airtime and do a tiny dive, get a little bit of speed, and at least you'll land it. And well, of course, the more speed you get, the more uh, work it becomes. Because there's quite a bit of setup time involved. Only when you get, you know, comfortably over over 1000 kilometers per hour, like 11, 1200 and faster, up to 1600. Uh, that's when it starts to become worth it. So you get payoff for your setup time. You're going very fast. Uh, to the hairpin in the refiller. So you have to steer into the hairpin a little bit, mash the Z button. So lose your grip on purpose trick to get around the apex there. Uh, so that's what I just did in a video. And now we're going to do a real drift on the right side again with the help of the dash blade. So just keep your drifting angle right into the refiller. Try to refill completely or as much as possible. Anyway. Again, right side attack, drift into the corner, time to boost well. Keep your grip here, keep on boosting, one more boost. Now I wait a little bit with the boost. And time it so that on the very beginning of the squirt through on the right side as you can see I do it sort of a real drift but when I leave the track I hold straight down on the control stick and the boost has to keep going to accelerate in the air and when you hold straight down you will automatically land back on the track and boost once more after you land it's all about the angle you leave the track with and the position because there is banking on the track if you leave later it's not going to work or if you leave even earlier it's also not going to work so I boost drift around the hairpin on this uh, boost latch. As you can see, you can get a little bit of airtime from that little hill before the tunnel here. The more airtime you get, the more speed you get from that tiny little jump. So you can even, on purpose, hold down the control stick straight down to get just a little bit more airtime. That's all optimizations. Tiny optimizations that will win you tens of a second. Again, same idea. Try to just do a real drift, like, but there's no real, so you leave the track, hold straight down, and while your boost keeps going, you land back on the on the first screen. So a true diagonal dive, because it's a, this is a diagonal dive straight from the track, that's why it's a true diagonal dive. They're not so hard, but they're time independent. If you start it too early or too late, it's going to mess up. That's why they can be very tricky anyway. So yeah, boost and finish the race. And if you do it well, this strategy is more than enough to get the world record. Alright, so you have to question why is a switch drift better than a regular drift? Um, 
because you have you keep a, a continuous drifting motion so let's say you do a, a drift to the left around the first corner and then uh, regain your grip and you do a drift to the right uh, that's just not up that's just not an optimal movement you uh, you waste time setting up drifts um, because these corners follow each other so quickly um, the only way to make it along the apex of the corner for both of them is to keep a continuous drifting motion feel free to use separate drifts if it's hard to do that I can totally imagine that it's hard to do that at first uh, it's also hard for me um, yeah, you, that was also fine. What you can also do for the first corner of the race is side attack along the first corner and use a left side attack into a drift to the right to drift optimally around the second corner into a real drift. That's probably what I would recommend if the switch drifting is really hard. On the other hand, um, it's the start of the race, so you might as well just mess around with it a little bit until you get it reasonably going. Uh, switch drifting is something that is more often used in the game. Yeah, so when you like start a switch drift and you drift to the left first, for instance, what I do is I hold the R button and steer the opposite way, steer to the left, then you start drifting. Keep holding the R button down, then I keep holding the Z button down as well while I'm still drifting to the left and just move the control stick while holding R and Z uh, to the right and your ship will start to turn while keeping in a drifting motion so you will never regain your grip as long as both R and Z are held once your ship has turned around and is now going to the right you can let go of R and you will drift to the right that's a switch drift pretty much Port Time 1 is another track where switch drifting is often used uh, as well as Big Hand for instance so it's a good technique to get, get down let's move on to strategy 4 Alright, so before I show this, um, I've only ever seen one player really use the extra two dives, or uh, actually three dives, uh, from, uh, from this race. They win very little time, because they win around eight tenths of a second optimally combined for three of them. The first one is hard dives uh the the other two dives which is the same dive on lap two and three are very 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 hard and they are amongst the hardest dives in the game i would say hello king pao i'm showing a live tutorial today so i'm almost at the end actually but if you have any questions feel free to post it in the chat and i'll try to cover it um so yeah, the dives you're going to see are in incredibly difficult and only a handful of people can pull it off so only bother with this stuff if you're going for the world record that's the short version <laughs> so let's watch it first and let's see
All right, that's strategy four. Incredibly hard, amongst the hardest strategies in the game, I would say. So, comma, comma to uh, a, a dot and a comma, that's a big difference between uh, US and Europe. In Western Europe, at least, uh, where I live, we use a comma as a decimal, and in the US, they use a dot. And very often, <laughs> with programs like Excel and so on, that's a big problem, uh, depending on what version you're using. So, I use a comma because it's correct for where I live. <laughs> Alright, so this this is the TAS run. This is the fastest TAS run that exists for this track at this point. It's incredibly, incredibly uh, hard. And, well, let's, let's try to analyze it. There's three dives new here. Um, for um, for this strategy, so yeah, let's go again. Start switch rifting in the beginning of the track. You do not lose speed if you hold R and Z together. So at this point, let go of R. Any point really here, as long as the drift is still going, and hold Z until you end the drift. Now, interesting moment. I regained the grip just a little bit earlier, then use a right side attack and hold down right the control stick. Now I hold down and immediately just frames away, move the control stick fairly down left with the wipe to turn the nose of the ship in a down left position, mesh the R button, and we have a tiny bit of room for error. Almost not to land back on the track here. This is something I usually do many many times until I get it right and I can get a run go. This move is the same as a previous strategy, except you have more takeoff speed so you can actually land further in the tunnel and keep more speed from that dive as well. And that is mainly where you will win the time. Because the first dive, you barely make up for a set of time for that dive. But on the second dive, if you can take advantage of the extra speed, you can win three or four tenths of a second. So this is a 16 second opener, which is crazy fast. So this is just optimal drifting, this is strategy 2 stuff. Diagonal dive here, same ID. In the beginning of the course through, not too early, not too late. Drifting angle, pull down, counter steer, that's it. Now this next double tap dive is crazy, crazy hard. I can just barely ever pull it off. It's actually the same dive as you as you would do in uh, lap one, except much bigger and much harder <laughs> to land. If you land this optimally at up to 2,000 kilometers per hour at the end of the tunnel, I mean, I mean wow, you can win uh, not even that much. Uh, tenth of a second because that hairpin turn is in the way. The track is so crammed that you have to side attack and drift almost the entire stretch of road with the refiller just to slow down enough and turn around enough in time to be able to drift around the hairpin. That's super super hard. Uh, yeah that's super super hard. Is it worth it? I would say no. I would actually say no, because you can get the world, at this point anyway, you can get the world record just fine, not bothering with it. Um, West 2, the player that has the world record here, does these dives. So, imagine that. I have landed these dives before myself incredibly difficult and I don't land them nearly as fast as the video because the faster you land them the harder it is to control and the harder it is to get around that hairpin. That hairpin is a big barrier here. Um, that's it for this strategy. Sub 45 seconds, 44. So 
Yeah, this is this is almost three seconds faster than the old record. You don't need to do these moves. You can do that. So if at one point the world record becomes in the 45 second range, they, they are, these moves start to become essential to, to do. Or in the, even in the 46 second range, I would say they're starting to become worth it. Your question is, does a 10 out of 10 difficulty move exist? Yes. So that's the end of the Big Blue 2 tutorial. 10 out of 10 difficulty moves in my entire tutorial uh, section for the entire game. There are two tracks that have a 10 out of 10 difficulty move in my opinion. One of them is Firefield, the other one is Wildland 2. They are insanely hard. In essence only one player ever has pulled them off and that's uh, Daniel. Daniel has pulled them off in his records. Um, yeah, I'll cover that in another tutorial. But there, yeah, that, those kind of moves do exist. Um, these dives are very hard as well. But at least I can land them. I have not been able to take advantage of it in my own personal vest. But, you know, I can, you can land them. And the other moves I cannot even do. So, that's that's how difficult that is. So that's the end of the Big Blue 2 tutorial. Uh, I hope it was informative. I hope it was enjoyable. That was the goal. If there are any more questions about Big Blue 2, feel free to ask them now because I have the time and I can still try to explain and show stuff. Also, uh, when I've done, when I'm done covering all the tracks for the tutorials. I will upload four videos just showing like the level one strategies for all the tracks, level two, level three, level four. Um, so you can just watch these uh, runs as they are without any commentary and just watch how it is as a reference or just to enjoy. All right, good stuff. Good to see some people in here. I think it was a lot more fun to do with people watching and commenta commenting on it, having some questions. Makes it easier for me to know what I should talk about. <laughs> Alright, so you have a question about true diagonal dives. Um, let's go. Right, there's one coming up right here. So what should you be holding? At all times during a diagonal dive, where there's an air diagonal dive or a true diagonal dive, you should be boosting. If you you can do it without boosting, but then you don't accelerate. Other than just falling down the track. So you can there's a this is a, a weird move, I don't know why this works, but for some reason it works in the in this game's physics engine. If your angle is so diagonal that the back of your ship is pointing diagonally down to the track, the back of your ship, so you actually see the underside of your ship on the screen, if you boost at this point and hold straight down, and don't hold up, hold down, uh, you will accelerate really fast back to the track. So there's a diagonal, true diagonal dive coming up here. What I do, I try to do an uh, imagine that there's a rail on the right side of the track. You have to watch the banking of the core screw really closely, so or just remember to do it on the very beginning on the right side. Not the first moment, but a little bit after the core screw started. So drift, just like you would drift against a rail here, but there's no rail, so you will leave the track. So your angle is about 45 to 50 degrees turned towards the side of the track, you will leave the track at this angle while the boost is going. Hold straight down on the control stick, only straight down. Hold the A button uh, down for gas and you don't even have to press B because you're already boosting at this point. Or mash the B button anyway so 
you start a new boost as soon as this one runs out. And yeah, you just fall back to the trap automatically. Counter steer when you land, that's it. It's something you have to practice. It's not easy, but it's not nearly as hard as this dive that you're watching now. I mean, this is something else. <laughs> this is not something I usually land, <laughs> to be honest. But, you know, it's possible. So boost should be going at all times while you're airborne. Hope that's clear. All right, any more questions about Big Blue 2? Or Mute City 2, for that matter, I showed that one before. I'm not gonna show it all again, <laughs> because I, I will, I'll upload this to YouTube and you can just watch it. All right, good to hear. Well, that's it for this session, I think. What I want to do is make this a weekly thing. So on Saturday evenings for me, I'll show one or two tracks just on a live stream like this. And well, this is pretty much the idea, just a back and forth and try to analyze different strategies for each track, try to explain it. Um, I could do it next week as well for uh, Wildland 1, which is next in line, and Firefield, which is probably the craziest track in the game. I'm not sure if I want to do Firefield and Wildland 1 together, but that would be the, probably, the, in my opinion, the coolest, the coolest two tracks to show yeah, for the Toriel 4. Because this, the tricks and the strategies that are going on on these tracks are crazy. I mean, uh, there's so much going on on Firefield and Wildland 1. That's going to be a lot of fun to talk about. So, I want to do another stream next week if, you know, everything allows it. In principle, I will do that around the same time, I think. And so, feel free to tune in. Uh, it's been thanks a lot for commenting. Thanks a lot for asking questions. That what that's what makes this work. And I think the next one should be one of the best sessions for Wildland One and Firefield. So thanks again for watching. I'll upload it to YouTube and see you next time.